Spirited Away. Today I want to break down for you a fairly famous scene from a very famous animated movie, Spirited Away. The main thing I want you to take away from this example is the dynamics of the piece and the timing. This scene happens quite early on in the movie when Chihiro is at the beginning of her character arc. She's this pampered little girl who's terrified about just about anything, including this flight of stairs, which are set very high up on the side of the building. It's pretty sketchy. Why didn't they fit a railing to this thing? For the first time in her life, she is in an environment where she's in genuine danger. Let's watch how she tackles the stairs. And from research, I believe this sequence was animated by Misuzu Kurata. Now I could be wrong on that, but that's what my research seems to indicate. Because of copyright restrictions, I can't show the whole clip here with sound. So after this video, I recommend for you to go to Netflix and watch Spirited Away. It's a wonderful experience if you haven't seen it already, or even if you have, just watch it again. It's well worth your time. It's a brilliant film. She's got her body angled towards the wall which is kind of the safety of the wall. It's turned away from this terrifyingly high up view that could give anyone vertigo. I love this composition, kind of diagonal divider in the frame. Maybe I'm reading too far into it there, I don't know. So we get an expression shot as well. We wanna see what she's seeing, think how she's thinking. We wanna have a window into her thoughts so we see the eyes. She goes to crouch down. This is what we call cutting on action, so as she moves down, we cut to the other angle where she's still moving down, you see? So it's cutting on action. You can tell that this is early on in the story because as she progresses, you will be able to see her gain confidence in herself and her abilities to navigate these problems. And in fact, there's a drain pipe scene later on in the film, which is a much more dangerous thing to navigate for her. And she just ties her hair up and she just goes for it. The fact that we have these two similar obstacles for her, one is in the beginning of the film, one is in later on in the film, is a great kind of experiment to see how far she's come as a character, as someone who's confident in herself. Anyway, I'm getting too far ahead of myself there. So she goes right down to the ground. So she's got as many points of contact on the floor as possible. This is just great, great body language, great character animation. Five points of contact on the ground. I'm sure you have been at a high place where you really just felt that vertigo and you just try and get as close to the ground as possible. So she moves one foot, and then she slides her body along. She's kind of probing with that foot that's going out. Very patient animation. These are all hand-drawn frame by frame. So this very patient of the animator, Misuzu Kurata. Okay, so one foot, then the other, moving the body down. Hugging those stairs as she goes. One foot, the other. And then here, we have a little disaster. Whoa. And I want you to have a look at the spacing. So her major points of body weight that a person has. They're usually in the hips and the torso. And so we usually use them to track the person as a coordinate. If we just go with the hips here, you see in this timing and spacing, so the spacing here to here, just moving very, very slightly. But then the next frame moves all the way from here to here. You can see here how the spacing of the frame is creating that sudden lurch forward. It's amazing how you can perform using just the timing and spacing of your animation. She goes and falls down and manages to catch herself. So she recovers from that. And I love these little touches. It's all these little details and this patience that the animator has because she wants to take it slow. She wants to go slowly. She probes with one foot until she touches the stairs. She can feel the stairs. Then she moves it along. So she's kind of rubbing along the stairs to just check that it's all there, rubs it back, starts to plant the foot, brings the other foot down, and gets those three points of contact on the step. Pauses, it takes a while. You see the wind blow through her clothing and hair as she stays still. She looks down. What you see here is kind of like the same view from the beginning. If I show you the beginning shot, it's kind of the same. So she's thinking like, I'm hardly making any progress with this, right? I'll be here all night if I keep going at the same pace. Frustrated scowl. She looks 
and now she's a bit more determined because she's thinking, okay, I've got to go down these stairs a bit faster. This is all communicated with no dialogue. Remember, you can do so much with the character's body language, with their facial expressions, and with their movement and stage directions. Before her foot comes down, we see these loose nails. <laughs> she plants her foot and she does a bit more probing and then all of a sudden, disaster. And I love this frame, how it's over the space of one frame, it goes from really slowly to disaster, all in the space of one frame. Bam, like that. Splintered wood, all of a sudden, she's got motion blurs on her, her spacing is massive on this, so her waist is all the way up here. On the next frame, it's all the way down here. The spacing is all of a sudden enormous for this. Splinters everywhere. It's suddenly just a big shock. Yep, we see her expression as well. And see her sliding down on her back. She manages to kind of use that momentum to get back up onto her feet and she just goes into a run. And you've seen that part, she sends it into a run. She's got her hands like this, splats into the wall. The animation stops for a moment. They hold on that frame and then she kind of unsquishes from the wall. A way to make the most out of your performance is to go really slowly when the character wants to go slowly and really fast when things are out of control. Timing and spacing are a method of storytelling, of heightening the experience of your story. And the other thing is dynamics. So this is actually what it looks like in my editing suite. So we can actually see the dynamics of the sound. Remember, sound is just as powerful a tool for storytelling as visuals are, and they should ideally be used in combination with each other. That's the best way of telling a story. You would have heard that it was quiet and all you could hear is just the gentle howling of the wind in the background. She might make the occasional little sound, little peep, until that stairs broke and then she just goes into an all out scream as she's running down. Hits the wall, it kind of goes back to that quietness before. So that's how it looks as the audio waveform. By the end of Spirit is Away, the problems aren't solved once and for all. She's still gonna move house and change schools. Instead of a happily ever after, we see her grow as a person to face future challenges. She learns the value of work and what happens to people without work. She gains independence. She learns to value her friends and family. She finds her inner resolve to be able to independently face problems as they occur. Spirited Away is an all-time great. If people want to say that Spirited Away is the greatest animated film ever made, I wouldn't even be mad. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. If you want to make animations of your own, Mastering Motion is an advanced online animation course designed to train you in techniques that go far beyond the principles of 2D animation. Advanced techniques like 3D hand-drawn camera movement, fight choreography, effects animation, character animation, as well as my reference process. If that sounds a bit too advanced for you, if you're a beginner, then I've got you covered as well with my Getting Started in 2D Animation course. This one lays the foundations of everything you need to make your own animated films. That includes drawing principles, animation principles, storyboarding principles, and the rendering process. And this is all in one place. No need to hunt down obscure videos in distant corners of the internet we build you up with animation exercises that grow in complexity as you learn more. It's a course that will help you to develop the ability to fully realize on the screen whatever crazy ideas are going on in your head. Go to animatorguild.com to learn more about these. The link is in the description and pinned in the top comment of this video. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you like, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.